We will go into your venture fund. I want to start first and foremost, though, in the fact that you're based in St. Petersburg. Yeah. How are your people? How are you? Luckily, everybody is safe and sound, and certainly our hearts go out to some all of the images that we saw in South Florida uh, today and, and, and in the past few days, and those who still have the hurricane ahead. So thank you very much. To follow on then, as we go back to the, now we know your people are safe, now the focus in yes. on, of course, the expansion of ARC, the venture fund, is this about inclusion, financial inclusion, for those that haven't had access to these sorts of assets in the past? Absolutely. The ETF, where we started with the public equities, you know, we think the ETF was a democratization vehicle for giving access to strategies that had otherwise been contained and locked up in all sorts of other funds for years that people can now trade, really do it yourself or share by share. This is really that next step, taking that same concept to the pre-IPO space. For so long, private assets, particularly private equities, whether that's venture capital or later stage have really been contained and constrained to institutional buyers or really the very wealthy. Mm -hmm. But if we think about accreditation and qualification, not by how much wealth you have, but how much knowledge you have, yeah. we think that's what we want to make available. And that's what this fund's really about. Well, let me just play devil's advocate here for a yep. second. Assume that, you know, I work for the government. I'm, yep. I'm the big regulator sure. looking over your shoulder. The case that they always made over the years has been that you need to have sort of a wealth threshold because those people in theory, no more. That's yep. the smart money. And the people at the bottom, they don't know as much, so they shouldn't have access to these risky investments. I know that a lot of holes have been poked in that theory yep. over the years. Poke a hole in that for me when it comes to venture capital. Uh, certainly, we'd push back right away on the concept that just because you're wealthy, you know more mm -hmm. about these assets or about these companies or the technologies. Mm -hmm. So really, that first headline uh, statement is, is our greatest source of pushback. We have had some of the best conversation with investors who own our ETFs, who own individual shares or or single digit shares and yet they have access to both the knowledge and the research we put out and they are just as educated on these technologies as the most wealthy in this country. At the same time, you know, we understand that risk and, and it's certainly important for people to size this appropriately. One of the nice things, we've partnered with Titan App to bring this product out immediately to all investors. Mm -hmm. We've worked very hard to make sure that we can get the minimum investment down to $500 so that investors can size this appropriately and not put a disproportionate amount. And and also, it's eligible for retirement accounts. And so when we think about the time horizon of yeah. these accounts, private equity, private assets in a long-term uh, retirement account rather than this day trading, uh, far more aligns with both the risk profile and the time horizon. We think regulators will, re will recognize that. From just a pure mechanic standpoint, how does this work when you think about mark to market? I know it's a closed end fund, not open ended, yep. but with private assets or harder to trade, how yep. do you look at liquidity and pricing? Well, so the nice thing is uh, the liquidity is actually one of the things that we think is one of the benefits of the fund that we're bringing forward. We're going to make sure that liquidity is available on a quarterly basis. Hmm. Now, it's gated liquidity as a percentage of the total fund, right. yet as the fund grows, we think that those smaller investors that are worried about that risk will have a greater percentage chance of. of of having really full liquidity on that okay. um, basis as the fund grows. But it's it's five, at least 5% of the fund quarterly, uh, not by individual, but by the fund. In terms of the pricing, certainly we've seen a lot of mark-to-market activity in the private asset space. We've seen a lot of that in the public space, frankly, <laughs> uh, on a daily basis in innovation assets. It is priced daily. These assets are marked. But at the same time, we recognize there's going to be less volatility and less inputs. If there are macro headwinds, which could be the economy, it could be currency, it could be what we see in the public markets. Those will be adjusted. But at the same time, these are long-term assets. These are companies that are certainly have significant growth tracks in front of them, and they'll be, they'll be priced accordingly. What's well, interesting, a little bit like we saw with the Vision Fund came in, mm. and it was saying, look, I will buy the company when it's private, but I also hold it when it goes public. Yes. How do you measure what point you exit in that respect? So we think that's one of the best benefits. And, we've, and, and the portfolio as it stands now, we have available. You can online at arc.vc, but it talks about these companies. And when we talk to the companies themselves, this is one of the biggest advantages of this fund. So it's going to be about 70% private and a steady state, about 30% public. And that works both ways. We can, we can take the money without cash drag and get into public equities as flows come into the fund. But at the same time, if these are great companies, 
we get to talk to these founders and say, we don't have a 10 year time horizon. We don't have a seven year artificial cutoff. We, there, we look forward to the day where we invest in a venture level company. We invest with it all the way through its private journey. It goes public. We hold it through mega cap, both in this fund and in the rest of our portfolios. We're not gonna be handing these great companies off or create artificial deadlines. We wanna be with those companies th throughout their entire journey. We want our investors to have access to where the real growth, the leg of growth is. If that's in the public space, that's great. If it's in the private space, that's great. We're trying to tear down these artificial silos, yeah. both in terms of the company's lifespan and the investors who get to participate. 